Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is March 4th, and today we're going to take a look at the system sliding down the West Coast here and what that means for us here in the Pacific Northwest. We'll also take a look at next week as the storm system is going to impact our area. We'll see just how much of this Arctic air is going to try to set up over British Columbia and just how strong the system is going to be into next week. we got some model disagreement going on currently still as a huge Arctic air mass is going to move down east of the Rockies and down into the central portions of the USA. We'll also take a look briefly at the severe weather coming up for the Midwest tomorrow, Sunday, and Monday. And we'll take a look at these systems that they track through California here. But we'll go into some detail on what kind of storm system we can expect on into mid-next week here for the Pacific Northwest. Are we going to get cold? How much mountain snow might we get? Is there a chance for a convection? We'll take a look at that in some detail. So here we're taking a look at the visible satellite imagery around the area. You can see a lot of eastern Washington is cleared out nicely, except for the Spokane area and the northeast terrain there where the fog is kind of in the valleys. Some moisture trapped at the surface there. The Puget Sound has also got a bunch of moisture in it too, and this north flow is kind of creating some showers as it moves down the sound, some residual moisture there moving through. That should start to break up this afternoon. We should get some pretty good sun breaks throughout the Puget Sound. There's some sun going on in the Washington coast too. A little bit cloudier down through Oregon as this system is sliding down the Oregon coast towards California. If you look closely here, you can see over the terrain some wave cloud activity as it moves down this stable northerly flow from British Columbia. And you'll see these wave clouds going on in the terrain. It's going over the Olympic Mountains a bit here too. I'll look at a diagram here in a second and show you why that's occurring. Here is that um, the higher terrain, the, the air gets lifted, of course, and sinks on the back side. And where you see the clear air is where the air is sinking. Where you see the cloud is where it's rising. And the stable air forces that layer back down, and then you get that clear area, and it, this oscillates all the way downstream. It can go on for you know, up to 100 miles sometimes, even more. So checking out the rest of the country briefly, you can see winter weather advisories from Montana stretching through South Dakota, Minnesota, and Wisconsin. Portions of the Colorado Rockies there and even some portions of Arizona. Nevada getting in on that action too. Another strong system is going to be moving through there this weekend. You can see the winter weather advisories through the Sierras all the way down through Southern California where there's even some winter storm warnings for the higher elevations and high surf advisories for the coastlines. There is another system moves through here this weekend. And you can see Washington relatively calm here coming up as we're just trying to clear out of this moisture and get a couple sunny days here before another system moves through next week, which we're going to look at in some detail here. So checking out Southern California here, there is some snow for the upper elevations. This is a big deal for Southern California. There's a lot of people down there. And when it does snow, it's, it's fairly, you know, it's kind of unusual. So heads up if you're down there, you have concerns of Southern California or you're traveling. The higher terrain also can be windy at times and they're getting a pretty good dose of rain here today down there and another system like i said moving through this weekend so checking out the radar across the region here you can see that we're just got these residual showers really through the puget sound kind of sliding south uh, down the i-5 corridor still some flood warnings for some of the rivers out here if you're in these areas you probably already know about that we can see the showers increase as you move down into oregon and southern oregon as this system is kind of impacting this area could even bring some heavier showers down here and some small hail, maybe even isolate a lightning strike in Northern California or through the Cascades of Southern Oregon, the Siskiyous down here, uh, the potential exists also for some lightning. And this kind of highlights that for Northern California, watch for that small hail as these showers move through and you know, it's kind of second nature to everybody up here, but California needs a reminder apparently once in a while on how to drive through the small hail. And here we are, Missoula, Montana, again, just highlighting that concern for the Arctic potential coming on next week. We're going to look at that in some detail, too, as a pretty good Arctic air mass is going to plow down into the central USA, mainly east of the Rockies. And we'll check out just how much that's going to impact us here in the Pacific Northwest as well. Here's that high surf advisory for Southern California. Not a big deal. And so looking briefly down into Southern California, you can see that system moving through there today. Bringing some pretty good moisture across the Intermountain West. So I can always use the moisture out there. There's still some drought concerns going on. And then you can see this next system kind of dive down. You can really see that surface low take shape here over Nevada as we go on into Saturday. And you can see that spin in the upper levels of the atmosphere. And that's reflecting there at the surface precipitation as it swings some potential for some thunderstorms up th uh, through the Intermountain West here, the Four Corners area. And even down through Southern California, there's thunderstorm potential. As we saw, there's winter storm warnings down there as well for snow and the higher terrain.
So looking off into the Midwest here, here is Iowa. There is a tornado threat for tomorrow, uh, maybe even a photogenic tornado. As this is a cold core setup, the visibility should be pretty good. And as a line of thunderstorms will develop in the afternoon, and there might be some nice images coming out here tomorrow. I did try my best to go out there, but I do have to work Sunday. I didn't plan ahead correctly, and I was going to go out there and do a little chase, but it was not in the cards this round. So you guys have probably heard about a feature called the dry line that kind of resides through West Texas here up through Oklahoma and Western Kansas. This is a good depiction of it here coming up. As we put this into motion, you can see these dew points and this moisture being drawn northward on early Saturday morning here. That's going to give that severe threat to portions of Iowa, eastern Nebraska, Kansas City area. And you'll see the dry line kind of move east here as that system moves off to the east and north and east. And you'll see these really dry dew points. And that's what's giving that fire danger to these areas too. Red, a lot of red flag warnings out there and some gusty winds with those low relative humidities. So jumping back towards the Pacific Northwest here, you can see the avalanche danger is relaxing a bit on the east slopes of the Cascades. There's still considerable danger for the North Cascades and there's still moderate risk for Mount Hood area, west slopes of the Cascades and the Olympic Mountains. So Northwest Avalanche Center, a lot of good information here if you guys are going into the backcountry. And this shows the NAM3 cam here. This shows that upper level low off the coast of Oregon really well. And you can kind of see the motion of that as it dives down the Oregon and California coast there and kind of takes up residence there over Nevada, uh, continuing to bring some uh, uh, thunderstorm threat to the Four Corners region there. And a lot of rain, snow for the higher elevation. So pretty dynamic system moving through the Southwest USA here. Checking out the composite reflectivity this is what the forecast is for the radar here this is what it may look like and you can see it's picking up those showers going through the Puget Sound this morning fairly well you can see that upper level low here and you can see the rain and snowfall continuing down through California as we put that into motion you'll see that system move south and you see our showers really cut off through Washington here as they continue through mainly the southern half of Oregon Siskiyou's Cascades should continue on through this evening with some precipitation and you can see that low spinning over Nevada on into Sunday morning and afternoon as it brings some thunderstorm potential for Utah. As we really dry out here through Washington and Oregon as we go into the weekend, we might get some nice blue skies here on the weekend and on into Monday before the next system starts taking aim at us early next week, which we're going to look at here in some detail coming up. So checking out the 80 meter winds across the region here, you can see that as we put this into motion, that those winds get going pretty good this afternoon, so it might clear us out pretty well. There should be some good sun breaks going on across western Washington today, including eastern Oregon. As Okanagan River Valley winds come through here, the gap winds as this high pressure pushes down into eastern Washington from the interior of British Columbia. Look, some of those winds get going pretty good. So you you know have a heads up if you're traveling on I-90. That crosswind out of the north is going to be pretty strong as we go in through the day and into tomorrow morning, finally starts to relax a bit. So checking out the North American Model 3KM high resolution model winds for today. You can see these Northwest winds moving down the Puget Sound should clear us out pretty good for most areas as the system moves down the Oregon coast, brings some high pressure into the region. You can see these Okanagan River Valley gap winds going pretty good here, and you can see they get pretty strong into this evening. So heads up if you're on I-90, 82, 84, is this strong north wind. It's going to bring a pretty good crosswind to some of these interstates through eastern Washington. And this wind should clear out a lot of that fog here for eastern Washington too as you go on into this afternoon today and on into the evening. So let's take a look at the exciting stuff here as we look at the European hot off the presses here, the 12Z run from this morning. You can see that system moving down the Oregon coast into California and Nevada. This sharp trough digging out over the southwest as this ridge really builds over the Pacific Northwest well into the Yukon. This is going to protect us from several for several days from any storm systems getting into the region as this ridge builds well into Alaska and allows this polar lobe to move on the back side of it towards the Pacific Northwest. And this would be a fairly dynamic system for portions of the Pacific Northwest. Some heavy mountain snows and some convergent zone activity, some convection would be possible with a scenario like this. So we'll compare this to the GFS and the Canadian here coming up in a minute. And this is well on into Tuesday night and Wednesday. So we have several days to watch this and kind of nail down the details of this system. As you can see, this doesn't hang out for long and really brings a strong Arctic air intrusion down into the central portions of the USA. 
So checking out that Arctic air potential, this is for Monday afternoon here. So we're well off into the future already. Put this into motion, you can see this is at 5,000 feet. This is the temperature anomaly at 5,000 feet. So unusually cold air is going to move down into British Columbia here. And the European does show a chunk of that going into central BC and would be affecting the Pacific Northwest. And you can see this Arctic air really just blasts down all the way through Texas, out across the Gulf states and through the East Coast on into next weekend. So pretty significant Arctic outbreak in this kind of scenario here. And we're mainly concerned with how much of that is going to break off and get into the Pacific Northwest. We'll see what the GFS says here in a minute. But here is the current troughing over the West, the Intermountain West, is that high pressure finally starts to build in and gives us several nice days here. Sunday, Monday, nice. And then Tuesday, you see the troughing start to open up over the region here. And this would be bringing that strong onshore flow convergence zone bands, heavy mountain snow, as this Arctic high really builds up over the interior of British Columbia here. Some pretty good gradients, and we'd get some good north winds in the wake of that system here as that finally would move off into the future. And let's run this out through the end of the run. You can see a, a weak system would move through British Columbia, more of a typical Pacific uh, Ocean system, and a much stronger low in the future there moving towards the Queen Charlotte. This could potentially bring an atmospheric river with it. As you can see, high building up over the interior west and the troughing over the Pacific Ocean here. So let's go ahead and look at the precipitation associated with this. Here goes the system today. We'll go into the future here. Check out these dry days coming up for the Pacific Northwest before the next system comes through. Tuesday morning, some good convergent zone band signatures, heavy mountain snows, and especially for the central cascades here. And look at the snowfall all the way down through Oregon. That would be much needed. Some good precipitation through eastern portions of Oregon to help bust that drought. And some good snowfalls for the Bitterroots and the Rocky Mountains out here. So this would be a, a nice system to move through the area. Let's hope the European is right. And then more of a weak Pacific frontal system moves through next weekend with a much stronger low on into the following week here. And you can see that kind of atmospheric river pointed at the Pacific Northwest here on into mid-March. We'll have to see how that plays out. Again, the Canadian was kind of showing that in yesterday's run too. So there might be something to it. We'll have to watch out for that in the future. Here is the GFS. Let's see if it agrees with the European model. Uh, of course, good agreement in the short term here as this digs a sharp trough over the southwest USA and the ridge really protects the Pacific Northwest for several days. And you can see it retrograde in this polar lobe, try to reach out to the Pacific Northwest, but notice that it doesn't get near as close as what it was showing on the European model. So you're going to have much less of an impact from this Arctic air if the GFS is correct. But the confidence was pretty good in the Arctic air affecting the rest of the two-thirds of the USA here as it moves all the way out to the East Coast into next weekend. And we return to a much more zonal flow on into next weekend. According to the GFS2, you can see the system's really plowing into British Columbia here and setting up shop. The trough sets up shop over here, the Gulf of Alaska, on into the future. But we're getting way out ahead of ourselves there. This would be the GFS surface map, that troughing over the Intermountain West, and the ridge really builds up and gives us some nice dry days coming up here. And here comes that Arctic air into next week, and you can see the troughing sets up much, for, much weaker and further east here as this Arctic high kind of sets up over British Columbia. So some big differences between the GFS and the European model. The GFS actually makes more sense to me. I think this Arctic air is going to stay a little bit further east, but it's, you know, it is the European, so you can't just discount it. There is still a, a decent chance that we are going to get a, you know, a fairly dynamic system out of this Arctic air as it moves down across the rest of the USA. So now checking out what the Canadian says. Again, you see in the short term, good agreement, that system moving down into California and digging out that sharp trough with the ridge bringing us our nice weather here for a few days. And then you'll notice the ridge retrograde and there's that polar low trying to reach out to the Pacific Northwest. And it's... It's a little more in line with the European actually there versus the GFS. But again, the tra trajectory at this point is not optimal. We'll take a look what the surface map shows with that. As this Arctic air mass looks like it's, you know, good confidence in the models for the at least the, the eastern two thirds of the USA. And just how much will it clip us is kind of yet to be seen. But this Canadian run kind of shows that clipping it a little bit more towards the European, what the European model was saying. And then you can see often to the extended more of a zonal flow returning possibly, but plenty of time to look at that. So yeah, nice few days coming up here. You can see Seattle's going to get up into the 50s Sunday and Monday. I think that we'll probably be up into lower 50s on Saturday as well. And then kind of the, the 
signal for some cooler air moving in the region here. What will it actually occur or not? It's yet to be seen. And here's for Portland, should be up into the 50s, all the way up, maybe into the lower 60s here, either on, on Monday, possibly, and maybe some of that chillier air going through midweek next week. Here's Spokane as well. Some nice days coming up here, you know, some warm afternoons, or relatively so, and the chilly overnight lows with some clearing going on through the next overday. So, yeah, um, tomorrow we'll check out this system again. We'll try to get some more model agreement. I'd like it with the GFS and the European would line up a bit more. And we'll see how that looks tomorrow. But there is a chance for an ice storm system coming through here next week. And we'll look into some of the details of that tomorrow. So like always, if you guys have any um, advice or some requests, put them in the comments. And make sure to click like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I will talk to you guys tomorrow.